So now that we've talked about some more mechanical definitions of a matrix, a vector, and some of the uh, concepts and definitions in linear algebra, we can stop and go back and, and try to look at our linear system of equations again and try to understand geometrically what this means in terms of lies, lines, curves, and plots, and so on. So first note I'll make here, there's a typo. This should have been A12 instead of A21. And noting again, reminding ourselves that we can write these equations in a more common form, format or in the linear algebra language as a matrix A times a vector X equals another vector, which we call B, where again, our vector X in this particular case is a set of two coordinates, X1 and X2. And our vector B is a set of two coordinates, B1 and B2. Right, so this is the more common way, the, the linear algebra way of writing uh, this linear system of equations. So what we're going to do now is take this linear system of equations and just rewrite it slightly. What we're going to do is take this x2 here and keep it on the left-hand side and transfer everything to the right-hand side. And then if you do that, and so let's rewrite our linear system of equations here, we're going to write x2 equals minus a11 over a12 x1 plus b1 over a12 and the other equation likewise we can do the same thing we're going to have x2 equals minus a21 over a22 plus b2 over a22 right so um, we can see that here essentially Oops, I forgot here, of course, x1, right? We have to multiply this by x1. So, you know, maybe you're more used to, to seeing these equations there as x1 being x, for example, and x2 being y, right? In such case, you may quickly identify this as the equation of a line, right? All coordinates x1 and x2 that satisfy this equation form a line in a two-dimensional graph. Maybe we can rewrite this once more in an even more familiar format. So we're going to write this as x2 equals some a times x1 plus b and this is x2 equals c um, oops let's uh, erase this guy it's going to be c x1 plus d in in this case here we have a taking the place for minus a11 over a12, and b taking the place of b1 over a12. c here is substituting for minus a21 over a22, and d is substituting over b2 over a22. Right, so we have just simply taken this linear system of equations over here and rewritten over here. And hopefully, in the hopes that this is more readily recognized as the equation of a line number one and the equation of a line number two. So if we go here and we're going to plot, uh, make a, a quick axis here, where we have here, this is x1 and this is x2. And let's say we're going to plot this line one. And here is our plot. So we can say that this is line one. And likewise, we're going to call this one line two. Let's say this is line two. What are we doing here? We are trying to find the solution x1 and x2 such that when I plug in into this set of equations, I get that the left-hand side is always equal to the right-hand side on all equations. In other words, another way of saying this is that we're looking for the point x1 and x2 that satisfy both equations, so means we're looking for the intersection of these two lines, which here is the point. Right. So one way to interpret what's going on in a linear system of equations that we're trying to solve for unknowns here, in this case x1 and x2, is to find for the intersection of these lines. Right, so we have here um, um, 
this uh, set out that we have done. Um, and what we're going to, to, to further examine here is that uh, there's a quite one more way to, to look at these equations, right? So, um, for example, right? So when we are when we are looking at these equations, we we again write this this set of equations as a matrix A times a vector x. In this case, the vector x is a vector of unknowns, right? Equals b. But so let's let's draw this for a second. So let's draw here our coordinates again. x1 and x2. So let's imagine that we knew x for, for, for just the time being, right? So uh, let's look at... Uh, let's say that this is x, our vector x. And then we look, what's the vector b? Right? So let's imagine that our vector b is over here. So what's going on here? When we apply this operation A, um, when we apply the operation A here onto X, we take X from this vector onto that other vector, vector B, right? So you can interpret this operation A, this matrix multiplication onto a vector, essentially transforming this xor from, from, from one point, right, from this point onto this point. When we're in the business of solving a, a linear system of equations, we know B, but we don't know X. So we are asking, what would have been the vector x that if I applied a to x, I got b, right? So that's the meaning of trying to find a, um, a, uh, a, uh, the solution for a linear system. So if we look at this particular linear system here, right, so we have cosine of theta sine of theta, and that's our vector on the side, right? This comes from simply multiplying cosine times one minus sine uh, times zero, and then sine times one and cosine times zero. So the result is cosine and sine. So here we've taken the vector x and transferred it to our vector b. And in this case, whatever cosine of theta would have been Right? The same thing can be said over here, where we have, you know, obviously this is going to be 3 and 6. Right? And so here we have our, vector, our matrix A, this is our vector X, and this is our B. So in this case, 1 and 2, our vector X, of course we're not drawing this, all of these examples here, but this would have been our vector X, and 3 and 6 got mapped to vector B. And we can notice that in this case, this is also equal to 3 times the vector 1, 2, right? So we have that in this case, we have a 1, 2 equals 3, 1, 2. So applying the matrix A to the vector X is the same thing as uh, multiplying the vector x by 3, right? So we're getting into the eigenvalue and eigenvector discussion, which will come up a little later for us. So once once you understand um, a little bit the, the meaning of this, this the geometric interpretation of these linear systems, you can start asking some questions. One important question is, when does a linear system have a solution? So a linear system right, which, again, we're going to start writing over and over this linear system as AX equals B um, as, as a general form, rather than writing all of these equations this way, which is kind of, it's a lot of, a lot of work, we can just use this shorthand hand notation, right, the meaning is exactly the same. So the question is, when does a linear system have a solution? Uh, it depends for which B, 
but if you would like to have a linear system to have solution for any B, absolutely any B that you plug in, then some requirements naturally come up. First requirement is that the matrix must be square and that the matrix must be non-singular, which is another way of saying that the determinant of this matrix cannot be zero. We just looked at the determinant, at the determinant a couple of videos ago. Uh, another point is that system of equations may have a solution, but sometimes numerically they can be hard to compute. Right? One way to assess uh, how hard a linear system is to solve is to compute the condition number. If this condition number is high, the system may be difficult to solve. This means that if we have, for example, another axis down here, if we have two lines, right, we're always looking for the intersection of these two lines. But if these two lines are very close to being parallel, then the condition number will be high because any slight error, for example, in the slope uh, of, these, of these lines could cause a very big shift on the solution, right? And this, this does happen in real practice, so it's something to keep attention on. Uh, we'll cover the condition number, number later on. MATLAB also has a number, a, a, a function to compute the condition number. Um, when the matrix is not square, then the system can have solutions, can have multiple solutions, or the system can have one or no solutions. For example, when the, when the system is so-called underdetermined, that means that we don't have enough equations. We have more variables than equations, in which case we're in a situation when there is multiple solutions, inf infinitely many, in fact. Likewise, the system can be overdetermined, um, and in this case, there may be too many equations, and in which case you can have either one solution if the equations are repeated, or if they are not, you may have no solution. 